The People's Pilgrimage is a special journey and it began of course uh, in uh, my own country in uh, Tacloban City which was badly devastated by the super typhoon two years ago and from there we intended to visit different places around the world uh, that were already confronting the impacts of climate change as well as communities uh, of spiritual significance and part of the idea was to visit places that showed solutions, places that were standing up against climate change and showing us the way. And as such, when we envisioned this plan to visit different places around the world through a pilgrimage, India, the land of pilgrimages, was such a, a very logical part of the whole journey. Our visit to India brought us to so many different places of uh, diverse cultures even within one single country. We saw different stories and the, uh, and the experience was both inspiring but also deeply heartbreaking to see so many people confront the impacts of a changing climate. This visit to India started in Delhi where we launched this whole journey here at Rajkot, noting the important significance of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's courage and leadership in inspiring um, a movement that emancipated his own people. And as we confront climate change and this whole ecological global crisis, we look up to that leadership and we take inspiration from that courage as we take every step forward. From Rajgad, we found ourselves walking around the streets of Delhi with uh, advocates and uh, religious leaders as well and that brought us to India Gate uh, which is a monument that stands for remembering those who have fallen during the war and while climate change presents a a new battle for all of us it is indeed a battle we cannot afford to lose the journey brought us to Varanasi, the capital of Hinduism in India and perhaps in the whole world, considered one of the most uh, holy sites for Hinduism, even for Buddhism and Jainism. And in Varanasi, we were welcomed warmly by students from uh, BHU who were already active in standing up uh, for protecting the environment and reviving the river Ganga. There we walked through the streets of Varanasi together with these young people and also engaged them in discussions about this very important issue of climate change and what young people can do to make a difference. In Varanasi, I found also the courage to take a dip into the Ganga and, and stand united with uh, the Hindu people in their homage for this great river that stands for so much spiritual significance for all of them.
also found this journey bringing us to Sarnath where Buddha made his first lecture and uh, that was a truly spiritually enriching experience to walk uh, on sacred ground and uh, also was very inspiring to see how much positive energy uh, that place Sarnath uh, represents uh, so many spiritual things but uh, in this world in this time and age when everything seems to be so disturbed such a place reminds us that peace and peace in our hearts is achievable We then went to Gujarat to visit uh, one of the largest solar parks in the world. And indeed, in this particular instance, India as a country can take pride in being a leading light in the development of renewable energy, clean energy that can power the people's lives, that can bring hope, uh, and that can show the way towards fighting climate change. This solar park in Gujarat, in Sharanka, uh, gave us a, a real picture, a great example of uh, what we as a human family can achieve if we, if we seriously look uh, at this problem and find ways that can alleviate and uh, mitigate the impacts of climate change through solutions, solutions that work and solutions that can create transformation not just within India but all around the world. The Gujarat Solar Park, while it is a large-scale renewable energy facility, shows us that the wave of the future can be achieved today. We've also visited some amazing places uh, that show little examples but show, show it in a big way. For example, a green ashram in Vadodara, which uh, is powered by, uh, usually by solar panels as well as by concentrated solar energy. And uh, almost every uh, imaginable and practical clean energy and sustainable solution is already being embraced by the ashram and again that shows us the way. On our journey here in India as part of this pilgrimage, we visit places that are not just of sacred and spiritual significance, not just communities that are facing the impacts of climate change, but also those that are uh, showing us solutions and making a difference in building models that can confront climate change in a big way. Just north of Mumbai, nestled in the mountains of uh, the Sayadri, there lies Govardhan Eco Village. It is such an enchanting place and uh, it is truly a place of solutions. It is uh, a sprawled in about 90 acres of land with lush forests with uh, so, so much uh, beautiful scenery around it. But uh, it is also home uh, to a wealth of knowledge on sustainable solutions including clean renewable energy that powers the entire village with its solar panels and biogas. It also has a goshala, a uh, place where they keep the cows and, uh, and fend for them and they practice organic agriculture and they produce uh, so many um, so many sustainable products from uh, from their cow farm as well. It also is of course highlighted by 
the mud huts uh, that they have built in the village and mud huts uh, which uh, um, which is a combination of modern techniques as well as traditional way of, uh, of building homes. Covardan Eco Village is of course a spiritual sanctuary which is run by uh, the ISKCON and uh, while it's a spiritual sanctuary it's also a very, very good refuge for those who seek solutions in this world where we face so many uh, problems that pervade our societies and the problems that pertain to the environment. We also went to Visakapatnam or also known as Vaisag. This city was, was badly hit by Cyclone Hood Hood uh, about a year ago and this place uh, is still reeling from those impacts of such an extreme event and with the climate crisis scientific experts have been telling us that uh, in the future cyclones will become more intense because of a warmer planet. Visakapatnam and the villages in the city showed us how heartbreaking it is uh, as an experience for people to go through so much suffering after being hit by such a cyclone and the storm has changed people's lives in so profound ways. Their homes had been washed away and millions of people are still trying to pick up the pieces and get back on their feet. Experience this cyclone before this, uh, but there was not much damage, so they thought this will be the same thing. In fact, this happened to everybody. Everybody thought there won't be much damage, but this was unexpected. This also reminds me of uh, the experience that my own people went through after Super Typhoon Haiyan hit the Philippines about two years ago. And this also reminds us that uh, unless we are able to come to terms and confront the climate crisis head on, more of these events will, will happen and more people will be affected. So it behooves us to embrace all of these people who are going through such experience and help build a world where we can prevent more of these cataclysmic events in the future. Visakapatanam also gave us hope because there we found young people who walked with us, young people who embraced this call for urgent climate action, young people who stood for uh, what is right, who are walking towards a new dawn filled with hope in their hearts. With that spirit and with that inspiration, we continued the journey and we will have Vaisag forever in our hearts and in our minds as we continue this journey. The journey in India could never be complete without paying homage to the most celebrated pilgrimage on earth, in fact considered as the largest pilgrimage on earth, which is the Kumbh Mela. And we were so fortunate to be able uh, to join millions of pilgrims as they participated in the Kumbh Mela 2015 in Nasik. What we experience in the Kumbh Mela is such a strong manifestation of faith that it gives us so much strength to fight for humanity and to appreciate 
that it is precisely the human condition today that makes the spiritual case against the ecological crisis so compelling. The Kumbumela, while also spiritually enriching for me, was a big eye-opener with respect to how we appreciate the human spirit. At the Kumb, I experienced such an awakening uh, that allowed me to see so much intensity and passion in the way people express and practice their faith and that gives us hope in our hearts that the world can become a better place because people believe in hope for the future and people believe in a, in a better world. The Kumb, uh, while heralded as one of the most important pilgrimages in human history, provides us with an excellent venue for reaching out to people of faith as we try to send across the message of ecological conversion and of uh, taking care of our planet. Having conversations with some of the gurus at the Kumb, it also gave us a lot of inspiration because they themselves expressed that the only way we can avert such a crisis like climate change is if we have spiritual awakening and if we look uh, into our hearts. Overall, this journey in India has been both overwhelming and enriching. With all of the colors, the scents, the cornucopia of uh, sceneries and experiences that you can take in while walking through India has given us such an important lesson on the human spirit and how people can stand together and walk forward together expressed in deep faith and expressed in hope for a better world and for a better future. This journey in India has been one of the most heartwarming and amazing journeys that I've ever taken in my whole life. And it's been an honor walking with all of the people, friends, and uh, all of the, those who I've, I've met in small villages and uh, big cities alike. And I stand uh, with uh, those who continue to walk towards a new dawn of hope.